Hey Tubes, welcome back. Uh, this episode's episode 10. I'm going to be reskinning the door that I'm going to put in this coach. I bought the door that I've got off of eBay for relatively inexpensive, like a $100 bill. Uh, it had been dropped, uh, the frame was a little bit beat up, and the in the face of it had a big a big gouge in it. It would have to have body work done on it at the minimum. Uh, so anyway, I was quoted at something like $1,200 for a new one. I bought this one for $100. Bucks. Probably going to save me a little bit. It's going to be a bunch of work. I don't know if it's going to be worth it or not. But the outside will be skinned with a piece of steel that's the same as the skin of the coach. And the inside, this has actually got some overspray on it. I don't know if you can see. This is just sort of a textured glass reinforced nylon. And it is a white white. This has got overspray on it and it's dirty. But Anyway, let's do it. This is fixing to be the door opening. Um, I have gone from the inside and, and measured on the inside the the cutout and have drilled. Now you can't see it, but behind this tape is several drilled holes uh, to mark it from the from the inside to the out. I've laid this painter's tape up here. I use it as a guide. I'm going to roughly cut through the center. Uh, I didn't get that quite centered, but. <clears throat> I'm going to use it as a guide both because I don't want to scratch the outside or the inside. And I'm planning on, if it works out, to take uh, this piece of steel and put it as the face of the door frame. I'm going to disassemble the door and use this piece of steel. All right, so I'm gonna pull this door apart. Let's do it. <clears throat> There's two screws here in the bottom. I hold the bottom seal or whatever I want this part on. There's two on the other side, but I'm already taking them out. Missed it. The outside channel, the aluminum frame, is simply glued with an adhesive to the core of this door. Uh, this adhesive was well adhered. It was very stout, and this was quite a pain. It took me a while to uh, probably 30 to 40 minutes just to get the uh, glue to release. I've got a, a little tool there. It's an auto body tool. It's sort of like a heavy-duty putty knife on a screwdriver, and I was able to use it to work around the door to sort of release the adhesive to break the adhesive and I uh, used it as a pry bar too. Uh, I'm pretty stout and this uh, I had to give it about all I had to get this adhesive to break loose in a few places and you'll notice here I actually bent the outer aluminum frame at one point it's 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 sort of bowed out uh, but this didn't end up being a problem after I got the door apart I, I just sort of put a block of wood in there and, and bent it back uh, it didn't it didn't turn out to be an issue but I just want to make a point that 
you know, this wasn't something that you can't do, but it just sort of was a pain. It took me a little while to, uh, to get it done. Okay, so I got this door part. If you're reskinning the door, this is probably what you'll have. They make several different styles, but you basically just have a channel in here. Looks like this. You'll have a you know outer inner veneer and a styrofoam interior, you know, styrofoam insulation. And this styrofoam is the majority of the structure, which is kind of uh, scary. Okay, the next thing I want to do is cut my steel panel out. So I've got my the piece of, of uh, steel that I cut out to make the doorway is what I'm going to make the door out of. Um, I'm going to use this as a pattern because it's exactly the right size and it's going to be easy. I'm going to put a few clamps on it so it sort of won't move around any. And I think the easiest way to mark this is just to scratch it. I've got a sharp wood chisel. I've done this on this painted metal before. I'm just going to go down here. Go ahead and mark here. Mark your handle. Now in my door, I'm not going to put the window back in it. The stripes are going to run over the window and it's got a window on either side of the door. I just don't think that it needs it. I love these things. These make it very easy to to follow a line, cut a very nice line. Okay, the uh, I think my camera didn't work. I just cut out, cut my styrofoam. It's uh, slightly oversized, and the what I've got here is three quarters of an inch thick. I couldn't get an inch and a half, so I'm gonna stack two layers. Uh, the next thing you want to do, and this is important, most of this insulation has got a vapor barrier and it'll just peel right off. You wanna make sure you remove this because the glue will not adhere to this plastic. The glue that I'm gonna use is a water activated polyurethane glue. This is the original Gorilla Glue. I recommend this, not the clear. Uh, the clear sets up faster. Uh, you can get on YouTube and, 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 or wherever and get some good information on this stuff, but this stuff activates with water and creates a sort of a foam type substance. And the white will actually make a more foamy and, and expand quite a bit more. And in this situation specifically, you don't want this to expand very much because it's going to jack the door apart. You'll also want to apply this very thin, as thin as you can. So <clears throat> I'm going to apply this glue to this joint and then I've got a roller I think it's going to get and I'm going to apply it to one side and then I'm going to take a wet rag, a damp wet rag and wet the other side. One important thing to consider, you want to make sure that this is flat when you glue both of these together and when you glue the door together. The reason being is that if this has got an arc in it or a low spot, when you glue both of these together, it will hold that, that, that arc or that bubble or, or whatever. And uh, you don't want that in your finished door. You want to make sure this is flat. This is probably not the best best setup here but I don't really want to get on the floor yet on the final glue I am going to do it on the concrete 
Okay, I'm gonna apply first glue to this here. Uh, you need to apply this as thinly as possible with good coverage. And I'm going to coat the edge. It's sort of got like a tongue and groove on this. Uh... On this certain board. I've got a damp microfiber towel. I'm going to wet this edge where these two meet. And they'll be ready to go. I'll do the same thing. Now I'm not soaking this down. This is just a wet towel. We're just putting just a little bit of moisture on it. I'll go ahead and wet this uh, wet this edge. I'm gonna put just a little bit of glue in this in this seam. And same deal. You want this to be damp. But not actually soaking wet. I think it works well if you'll sort of move the two pieces around slightly on top of each other. Make sure you get good, good glue coverage. And in this case, I'm gonna take this old door, just because it's something that's straight and flat, and I'm just laying close here. All right, it's been all day. Pop it out and see what it looks like. All right, so that's what we want. It is uh, well adhered. You can see the foam has sort of squirted out the edge of this seam here. <clears throat> I'm gonna give it a good wipe down with acetone. Now, if you haven't seen my previous videos, you may not know, but this is a two-part black epoxy primer over this metal. It's called paint grip. It's a, I've forgotten, you can Google it, some kind of phosphorus uh, electric plate coating or something, I don't remember. <clears throat> but it's designed to take old base paint directly. Of course, this is not old base paint, but this is a good... Uh, 
really, really good hard epoxy primer that'll, that'll keep surface rust and whatever, and it helps. That epoxy is a good uh, layer that helps glue whatever you're gluing to it, whether it be paint or glue or whatever, to the metal. So in this joint, I'm going to use a little bit more, um, a little bit more glue. What I used previously was enough. You did sit ooze out, but it didn't swell as much as I expected. So I'm going to, uh, by guess, I'm going to about double or increase by maybe 50% the amount of glue I used. My little uh, deal is kind of, kind of screwed. This is the last one I got, so this may be a pain. Same deal, I don't know if you can see me, but wet damp in this uh, we'll go ahead and stick it on here. And I think it works best to work this around a little bit. Alright, so that I know I've got a good flat surface to work on, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this on the floor. I'm off camera over here, I realize, but I'm going to do the same thing to the back of this plastic that's going on it. Same deal, we'll dampen this. Check our interior board. Same thing, drop this on there like so. And then just stack all this crap on there. All right, looks good to me. We'll pick it up tomorrow. All right, it's the next day. Let's uh, pull all this crap off and uh, take a look at it. It looks pretty good. I get you some up close shots, but okay, there's an edge. This is a steel edge. This is a correct size. I've taken a carpenter's knife and trimmed this back relatively close. And do something like that, go all the way around it. You want to clean out the the old glue. And I've got a relatively sharp wood chisel. This seems to work pretty well. This seems to peel it right off. I'm gonna be using two different types of adhesives, sealants, whatever, sort of one and the same in this situation. This is a silicone based black flexible. Uh, this stuff will work real good. It adheres to uh, vinyl, aluminum, metal, vinyl, all this kind of crap, everything. This is a similar stuff in the, as far as the way as it acts, but it's a uh, it's an acrylic urethane elastomeric sealant. It's acrylic urethane. And this will attach real well to the, the plastic. The, uh, this, this, this is actually a uh, what do they call it? It's a glass reinforced plastic. It's got fiberglass inside the plastic, this, this material. But anyway, I'm using two different colors. These are different products, but they'll act similarly in their in their in the way they stretch and in, in, in adhesion. But I'm using two different colors for aesthetic reasons. So if I leak any out, I'll have white on the inside and black on the outside. You've got to get it up in that far corner wedged up in there because once you get this side in you won't be able to push it forward very easily. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this stuff. I'm going to apply it liberally. 
white on the bottom, black on the top. All right, I probably over applied it, but my life revolves around overkill, so why not? I'm gonna put the bottom rail on without sealant just to use it as a base to, to help me pull this up into the corner. now fully seated in this direction and now I've got to slide it over to get it seated over in this this way okay I got a ratchet strap down at this end just to sort of hold everything together for now these clamps you see me using here is called a pipe clamp. You can pick these up at Home Depot. They're relatively inexpensive, like $25, something like that. And then you buy the piece of pipe. It takes a half inch piece of pipe. And you can buy the pipe as long or short as you like to make these, you know, infinitely long. And they work really good for, the, for a situation like this. And they're, and they're cheap. I'm just going through here, working this in. I've just got a slight bind pulled in. The bottom lip I start first. You can't see it, but I'm just making sure that this channel is sort of rolling under. And I'm just going along here with a, actually with a wood, with a wood chisel, and just poking this. See it kind of pop a little ways there. Just sort of poking this back up underneath here. And I'll tell you what, I put way too much adhesive on this thing. I sure made a mess. It's very important that the inner frame of the door is pulled all the way against the door core. If it isn't, it'll be flexed out and it'll actually hit the door frame of your coach. And you want to make sure here, I've got a few ratchet straps and some clamps, and here I'm putting the, uh, the, bottom, the bottom rail on and the screws. But you need to make sure to take some ratchet straps and clamps, whatever you've got, and pull in all directions to make sure that the inner frame is pulled tight against the door core. Here you see me working it. And it looks like it's all the way on, but when you tighten that clamp up, it, you can actually sit pull in, in slightly. Anyway, you need to make sure that that is well seated. I scrubbed around on the door, got it pretty clean. I know when I build this thing, it's probably going to get dirty, so I'm not too worried about making it spotless. It'll get a good scrubbing when I'm finished with the, with the whole project. But it's got all the extra uh, adhesive and crap off of it. Uh, it's got a 24 hour dry period, but you gotta remember you've got a lot of material in here that air is gonna be hard for it to get to, oxygen. And it's probably a pretty good idea to say this isn't gonna be cured for at least seven days. Probably in a day or two it'd be all right to handle it but I don't think I'd drive it or uh, if you can get away with it you know let it sit there a week it ain't gonna hurt anything if you're in a hurry to get it put back in because your yours is outside your RV's outside or something that's understandable as a starting hole I'm gonna punch a hole all the way through the hole saw I'm gonna try to cut the steel with my little pair of shears I don't know if I'll be able to get around if your door is not made of steel this would be much easier This point is actually when the next video takes place, episode 11, and I'll paint it. If you'd like to go watch it, you can watch it, and then we actually come back here after it's painted and install it. Here's the ceiling I'm using. I'm gonna put a pretty heavy bead, uh, bead of this in the crack of the door frame as it goes around the door to, uh, to seal it.
that's a pretty good fit where you can just push it in and it stays. I realize this video was probably excruciatingly boring, but for those of us that are rebuilding an RV, or in my case, building an RV, uh, I wish I would have had a video like this to watch. I had this door quoted at almost $1,200. I bought this one inexpensively off eBay and redid it for probably 150 bucks or something. Saved me a bunch of money. Uh, I appreciate you watching all these videos. I want to end this with kind of talking about it here at the end, but we'll catch you all next time. Looks pretty good. I'm having to cut the screws off, like run them in with, where they drill, and then cut the end of them off to where they're only about that long because they bought them out in that piece of three-quarter inch tubing. Uh, this door took a tumble pretty hard, and I think these hinges are bit. You can see the, the crack over here is pretty wide, and it's almost touching over here. I'm hoping I can bend these hinges that way a little bit. Uh, the door just barely the drags right there. I mean, just touches. I am super pleased with the uh, way the door came out. It looks nice.